Although the Chernobyl disaster had an immediate impact, including radiation and huge pillars of smoke, the long-lasting impacts on Russian society, on other European nations, and on the environment are the true legacy of Chernobyl. These widespread effects highlight the great danger presented by scientific exploration. The Chernobyl reactor was located in the Soviet-controlled area of Ukraine. Though it was in a largely unpopulated area of Ukraine, the reactor was about three miles from the town of Pripyat, which had a population of about 49,000 inhabitants. On the night of April 25, 1986, the crew of Reactor 4 ran a standard test of turbines in the reactor. This test determined how long these turbines would spin and provide power to the reactor in the event of a main power failure. This test had been performed many times before, but this time was different. This time, it went terribly wrong. The test caused a power surge to the reactor core. The crew was able to shut off the reactor, but it left the core in an extremely unstable condition. Cooling water and hot fuel generated a great amount of steam, and pressure in the reactor built up quickly, so that in the early morning of April 26, two explosions occurred. These explosions threw dangerous fission products into the atmosphere and killed two workers in an instant. These two workers could be considered lucky because 28 other workers and firemen experienced long, painful deaths after being exposed to about 2,000 millisieverts of radiation. To put this into perspective, American workers today are only permitted exposure to 50 millisieverts of radiation per year. Any more than this is considered detrimental to that worker's health. Being near Chernobyl for one day after the accident was the equivalent of working for 40 years in a nuclear power plant. The immediate impact of this disaster was these 30 deaths and the spreading of dangerous iodine-101 and cesium-137 to places as far as Scandinavia. Chernobyl had a major economic impact, with a cost that grew to an estimated 1,185,000,000 rubles. The town of Pripyat was evacuated, and it has been uninhabited for the 30 years since. A total of 350,000 civilians were evacuated from Chernobyl and the surrounding areas. While these people were given free housing, a majority were left without jobs and uprooted from their homes. Those few that returned back were able to cope with the disaster more easily, but for a large part, the community was traumatized and devastated. Today, Pripyat is a home only to feral dogs, thrill seekers, and military patrols. This was only the beginning of a disaster that stretches over the decades after its occurrence. It is estimated that the thyroid cancer rate for 1986 to 1997 was 10 times greater than the pre-accident level among Ukrainian patients under 15 years old. Other children are horribly disfigured, and the infant mortality rate is 300 times higher in Belarus near the accident site than in the rest of Europe. It's the only moment you have. Is it painful? Are you when you're No. И не болит, если ты садишься? Нет. А как ты вот двигаешься? Вот так и передвигаешься, а в школу? А в школу меня носят. Кем ты хочешь быть? Врачом. Anti-Soviet feelings were amplified after it took Mikhail Gorbachev 18 days before he issued a statement regarding the Chernobyl disasters. Good evening, comrades. As you all know, a misfortune has befallen us. The accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant it has painfully affected Soviet people and caused the anxiety of the international public. For the very first time, we have encountered in reality such a sinister force as nuclear energy that has escaped control. The scientific, technical, and economic potential of the entire country has been put to use. This vagueness of speech further strained American relations with Russia. On April 28, 1986, the New York Times released an article that said, quote, Gorbachev's phrasing suggested that the problem had not been brought under full control at the nuclear plant which the Soviet announcement identified as Chernobyl Station. Tony Barber, a foreign correspondent in Moscow, criticized the Soviets for keeping their citizens in the dark. Quote, Dwelling in time art fashioned on propaganda, rather than facts, Tass then issued an article alleging the U.S. had experienced 2,300 nuclear accidents and breakdowns in 1979 alone. Hypocrisy and duplicity are as Soviet as stale bread. The Soviet mishandling not only aggravated relations with America, but also relations with other European countries. British Foreign Secretary Joffrey Howe said, quote, There is a deep concern at the Soviet Union's failure to give early warning of this. It is a serious lapse in European good neighborliness. Margaret Thatcher later released a statement that said, 
quote, the Soviet failure to alert European nations to the radioactive cloud moving towards them raises questions about Moscow's new open policy. West German Foreign Minister Hans-Dietrich Goncher called on the Soviets to decommission nuclear reactors until more was known about the Chernobyl accident, and the European Community Commissioner in charge of nuclear safety, Stanley Clinton Davis, accused the Soviet Union of breaking international law for not disclosing the accident earlier. These statements demonstrate a previously unseen political tension in Europe that brought nuclear power to the forefront of political debate. The pressures from Sweden, Denmark, and other countries resulted in new safety regulations and inspections for nuclear reactors throughout Europe. Though nuclear power is now safer than ever and Cold War aggression has died away, the environmental impacts of Chernobyl are more evident today than ever before. Biologists have discovered an alarming number of defects and abnormalities among the populations of animals in the Chernobyl zone. It's a perfect area for biological studies because we see a diversity of, of plants and animals. It's one of the hotter areas uh, in the Chernobyl zone and, and so from our previous work we know that this, this level of, of chronic exposure is above that that most species will tolerate. Most environmentalists think only of mutations and abnormalities when they think of Chernobyl. But an oft overlooked benefit of the Chernobyl disaster was that it created a veritable nature reserve that has remained untouched by people for 30 years. The environmental impact of Chernobyl then and now is one of the incident's most heavily affected areas. At the time of the disaster, the main environmental impact was, of course, the radiation. At the time of the reactor's failure, 5% of its reactor core was released into the atmosphere. This amount of radiation equates to 5,200 PBQs of xenon-133. The radiation still exists in the Pripyat-Chernobyl area, however in much lower doses. While Chernobyl has been classified as uninhabitable by humans for 20,000 years, wildlife flourishes in the desolate city. The area began as a city overgrown by a forest, but by 2015, this city has become the forest. Buildings are engulfed by trees and sidewalks are obscured by shrubbery. Wolves, elk, boars, deers, and owls and other species now call this reserve their home. Endangered species like Kowalski's horse and the European bison have been introduced to the area and are flourishing. The wolf population is estimated to be about seven times greater than 30 years ago. While humans cannot inhabit Chernobyl, the former nuclear facility has become a preserve for the wildlife stated before. Without the interference of man, nature has been able to flourish, proving a silver lining to the Chernobyl incident. As terrible as it may seem to present the idea that Chernobyl may have benefited the global population, the benefits of Chernobyl far outweigh the losses. While Chernobyl was a tragic and frightening demonstration of the dangers of harnessing nuclear power, it in itself gave way to benefits that, at the time of the incident, could not be predicted. The Chernobyl in incident set a precedent for the management of nuclear power. The Soviet response was seen as irresponsible by the Americans. The U.S. believed that the Soviets handled the incident poorly in many ways, such as a poor response to evacuation, slow alert notification of the public to the incident, and a lackadaisical response to protect the local food chain. The Chernobyl incident set an example of how not to handle a nuclear incident, such as the notion by the Soviets to keep the public in the dark. The radioactive materials released into the atmosphere have long since dissipated, leaving the world only with greater awareness of nuclear safety, providing millions of people involved in nuclear power with more guidelines and protocols to improve nuclear safety, and giving hundreds of animals, some endangered, a safe haven from the increasingly industrial world that continually pushes nature to the boundaries of civilization until these boundaries no longer exist. Too frequently is Chernobyl dismissed as a scientific failure or lumped together with other disasters like tornadoes, hurricanes, or economic recessions, even becoming the subject of a few poorly made horror movies. When Chernobyl is like none of these disasters, because there is no silver lining in a tornado or a hurricane, only pain and suffering. Chernobyl, as previously mentioned, had several silver linings, and the good far outweighed the bad. For this reason, Chernobyl demonstrates the inherent dangers of scientific exploration, but also that even in a so-called scientific failure, mankind can be benefited just as much as a scientific breakthrough.